Hallelujah. Somebody who wants to be more. Can you help me tell your neighbor, say, I am more than this. Somebody joining us online, if you're more than this, let us know in the chat room, let us know in the comment. I want you to confess it this morning. Say, I'm more than this. Or say it one more time, say, I'm more than this. Or, or somebody say it a little better, say, I've got to be more than this. And if you believe that God is making you more in 2022, put your hands together this morning. Celebrate Jesus. Come on, somebody, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, for everyone joining us from home, everyone joining us from wherever you're joining this service from, you may be in a car, at the train station, you may be at the airport about to catch a flight, you may be just be in the comfort of your living room. I want you to put distractions away from you as much as you can and get ready to be blessed in this service today. God has a word for you. And one word from God can change your life forever. Just one word. He sent a word and he lighted the whole of Israel. And when we pray, God, God sends us words. The Bible says he sent his word and he, his word healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. I pray that your word will come. I said I pray that your word will come. And it shall be a word of lifting. It shall be a word of, 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 you know, of, of divine exhortation in the precious name of Jesus. All right, uh, today also we're going to be praying for our children, whether they're teenagers, uh, preteens, you know, kids, toddlers. We just believe that as we go into a new year, we should always speak a blessing over our children. We live in a time and an age where there's a whole lot of attack, onslaught on children. Yeah. At home, in school, you know, uh, the devil is after our children and we will not relent in playing our part. Uh, to separate them for God's goodness. And I believe that your own children shall be for signs and wonders. Uh, I cannot hear your amen very well. I say your own children shall be for signs and wonders. God will protect your children. He will shield them from evil. And every evil seed that has been planted this season will not grow in the heart of our own children. So at the end of this message, I'm also going to be praying from here. If you are, if you're joining online, uh, that's the time to draw your kids closer. If you can get, you know, oil, you know, olive oil, any kind of oil that you, I, I, I'll pray from here, and then you anoint them with oil. And if your kids are here in 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 the kids' church, uh, uh, in Seeds and uh, Teens Nation, we, we, our ministers are also going to go and pray over them and anoint them with oil. And if you have your kids with you, right in the room, right here. Uh, our ministers will also come to pray for them uh, under the gallery where we believe that they are at the nursing mother's corner right there. Praise God. I said praise God. All right, are we ready for God's word today? For everyone joining us on all the different platforms, watching from all around the world, and if you're watching this on TV as well, I want you to get set to be blessed. I'm so excited about the word that God is bringing our way today. And um, I'm excited about the things that God has planned to do this season and this year in your life and my life. Uh, so the, 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 the song from the choir this morning already pricked my message. Yeah, it's time to be more. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 11 and verse number 12, Matthew 11 and verse 12, it says, since the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffers violence. That's the way King James put it. The king, kingdom of God suffers violence. And the violent does what? So the violent take it by force. Uh, time will not permit me to read other translations. But this, what this simply means, it says since the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God has been forcefully advancing. And the forceful advance with it. Yeah. So he's not talking about violence, like domestic violence, no. <laughs> We're not about to punch anybody. It is forceful advancement. Since the day of John the Baptist, when John came and said, repent, the word repent simply means change your mind, turn around, see that your life can be better. There's something better in God than what you have experienced. That was what John was saying. Yeah. There's something better 
in God and what you have experienced. Metanoia in the Greek, uh, repent. It, 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 you know, just like we say paranoia when you are, uh, there's also metanoia, which is there's something beyond meta that is beyond your thinking. There's a higher thinking. That is metanoia. A higher thinking. Greater than what you have taught before. Like the scripture says in Ephesians 3 and verse 20. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly far and above that which you can ever ask or think. There's something meta. There's metanoia. There's, there's a thinking that is higher. There's a level that is higher. There's a, there's a perspective that is better, higher than your perspective. And when we step into a, a new season like this, God wants us uh, to, to, to understand him in a new manner, to see something better than what we have seen before, to understand something better than what, we have, what, 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 what understanding we've gotten before, because that's the only way we can position for the new things that he wants to do. That's the only way we can position for new things. When we choose higher thoughts, higher thoughts. Like he said in Isaiah 55, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your, 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 your thoughts. So somebody, as we step into this new season, God is saying, you can be more. You can be more. You can be more. But you know it's important for you to try to dimension where you are as we discuss this, uh, you know, within the next 30 minutes or thereabout. I need you to understand that for me to be more, I need to be able to dimension where I am. Because if I say uh, I need something more, it means I'm talking about something more than where I am, or more than what I have. The dimensioning must be bigger. But if I don't know where I am, or who I am, or where, you know, what is happening right now, I will not be able to dimension what is more. Yeah. As we have come into this year, some people are struggling to capture what emerge will mean to you. Which area are you going to emerge? Where are the urgent needs for an emergence in your life? And, so, and we're at different places. Some people listen to me right now. You are that place where, you know, it's been good. We can't complain. You know, like we say in this part of the world, you say to somebody, how are you doing? Oh, we can't complain. <laughs> what an answer. Yeah. It's an answer from somebody who feels, yeah, things are okay. Things are okay, and sometimes we're at that place of things are okay, and we're beginning to settle. We're beginning to settle. Some other person, you know, you came into this year, you told yourself, this year is fight to finish. Yeah, it's fight to finish. Me and God will fight. Me and the devil will fight. <laughs> yeah, whatever may be on the way. In fact, some people have made up their mind. Even if my spouse stay on my way, I will crush, I will... I'm like a trailer that has lost its brake this year. I'm just going to, anybody that tried to stand on my way, I, you know, maybe that's how you came into this year. You're bullish. Yeah. You're willing to press in. That's great. You are the kind of person that would need to help to gain perspective in your bullishness so that you don't crush what you're supposed to build. But you know, there's some people who need impetus. They need to gain momentum. They have settled. And there's more. But you've lost your zest. You've lost that thing, that, you know, that aspiration, that sense of aspiration. You, you, you're trying to feel it, you can't feel it. That's part of the effect of COVID. Yeah. You know... <laughs> I don't know about you, but many people are still... You know, there's a difference between pain and trauma. Give me one minute, I'll break this down so I can get back to, to our discussion. Many people have gone through pain in 2020, major part of 2021. 
as we step into this season, and as the pandemic starts to wane, and that's what we're trusting God for, we have to deal with the trauma. We can't run away from it. Yeah. Many people think, you know, you know I lost a job, a business failed, now I'm bouncing back, I, things are going to be better, and da 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 da. But you need to trust God to help you deal with the trauma. Yeah. Traumas come after the experience. The pain is one thing, the trauma is another. Especially amongst us, you know, uh, uh, people of African descent, we, we don't recognize trauma. <laughs> we are very bullish about dealing with pain, but when it comes to trauma, we, we sweep it under the carpet. You know, we tell ourselves, pick yourself up. What has happened has happened. Move on. Yeah, you can move on, but you also need to trust God and the help of the Holy Spirit to help you deal with the trauma, the effect of what has happened. Yeah. And all this put together is what God is saying we're emerging from. You're not only going to emerge from the pain, you're going to emerge from the trauma. Oh, nobody's here this morning. Yeah. Now speak to somebody watching me online. That trauma will not stop you this year. My God will hold you strong. You shall be made whole. He will send you help. Every word of encouragement, word of healing that you need to come out of that trauma, that will, 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 will abate the effect of that trauma, God is sending it your way this year. In the precious name of Jesus. Somebody say it better, amen. amen. So it's important for us to understand that as we emerge, we are emerging from different places. We are emerging at different levels. Yeah. Somebody is emerging from not enough to more than enough. Somebody is emerging from success to significance. Yeah. Everything is good, but you're still, you still need to emerge. Yeah. You still need to emerge. Let's get into the Word of God. I want to exegete the text from John chapter 12. John chapter 12, and uh, maybe we should read from verse 21. John chapter 12 and verse 21. Jesus described something here. He had an experience. And in trying to get into this text, I want us to understand something that if Jesus will recognize the need to be more, then you and I need to recognize the need to be more and be willing to press in. And this is how we emerge. And I want us to follow through with this principle, this, this, the way Jesus described his images. The Bible says here, I'll go to verse 20, verse 20. Let's start from verse 20, quickly, verse 20, verse 20. Now there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus. You know, when uh, a message is not straightforward, when there's an issue, that's when people pass things from. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Yeah. If I ask you something and it's so straightforward, is that you go ahead and answer me. Or if I say, can you talk to your brother about something, you just talk to him. You don't have to look for somebody to talk to and then I want to talk to another person to say, let's prepare how we're going to deliver this message. It means there's something about this message. Ordinarily, you see it as in people came and they wanted to see Jesus. So what's all this ula balu about? What, what's all this protocol about? Just tell Jesus, you have a visitor. Come and see them. Yeah. But the Bible described the people, they were Greeks. They were outside of the current scope of Jesus' ministry or what he had been doing or extending himself towards. They were completely outside of that scope. That was what necessitated all this protocol. And somebody, uh, this year, you are going beyond your usual scope. I cannot hear your amen. I said you are going beyond your usual scope. 
when it's time for more, we have some kind of attitude that wants to envelope us, to tread cautiously, to want to do things, you know, cautiously. And those were, that was what the disciples were trying to do. That's why when you share great dreams with people, they tend to want to, you know, just tell you to slow down. They were, they were just being cautious. How are we going to tell Jesus this? These people want to see him. Yeah. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus, but Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. And verse 24 says, Most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone, but if it dies, it produces much grain. Jesus took them straight to the firm in his uh, uh, metaphoric illustration of what was about to happen, that if you're going to be more, if you want to break your scope, if you want to go beyond your initial boundary, you need to visit uh, the firm and understand how seeds grow in the ground and how they multiply. Let me backtrack a little and say a bit more so that somebody will understand me again. In Matthew 15, when you read from verse 24, Matthew 15 from verse 24, can you put it up for me? A woman, or, or, you know, a Canaanite woman came to Jesus. Yeah, came to Jesus. Uh, go to verse 22, verse 22 of Matthew 15. A Canaanite woman came to Jesus and asked, the Bible says, and behold, a woman of, of, of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her uh, not a word. Look at that. That's Jesus, the Savior of the world. Answered her uh, not a word. And his disciples came and heard him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. What was happening right then was that Jesus was in this sector or operating in this industry. It's called the Lordship of the Household of Israel. Jews only. Somebody, this year, God is increasing your scope. I cannot, I cannot hear your amen very well. Jesus did not answer this woman. They heard him Send her away, but she cries after us. But when he will answer, the Bible says, but he answered and said, I was not sent. Can you hear that? I was not sent except to the lordship of the house of Israel. I was not sent except to the lordship of the house of Israel. That was a perspective. That was a scope. As at the time, then she came worshipped him and said, Lord, help me. This woman decided that I will not take no for an answer. And by a stroke of divine mercy, Jesus gave her what she wanted, but that was not his focus or his scope. But he answered and said to her, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to, the, to little dogs. And she said, yes, Lord, even the little dog eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. At that point, Jesus knew that this woman had faith. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed that very hour. The woman pressed in. She was outside of the scope of Jesus, but she pressed in. Jesus himself was outside of his scope. By the time we are reading John chapter 12, they came to meet him again, just like this woman came right here. This woman had to press in, press outside of the scope, because somebody may be listening to me right now, you may be like this woman. How do we demonstrate faith that God, even when we don't qualify, by uh, divine mercy, doors can be opened. By divine mercy, some things can happen. My mind can open. My eyes can see. I can press into something bigger, something greater. Somebody, I don't care where, where you have been in the last two years, last five years. 2022 must be different for you because the God of mercy is showing up at your doorstep. Yeah. When mercy shows up, it's not about where you have been. You may have been completely outside of the will of God. But when mercy shows up, when you press by faith like the Canaanite woman, 
something breaks. This is not part of my message today, but I believe prophetically that this is for somebody here. You came into this service feeling extremely unqualified for grace, unqualified for favor, unqualified for the mercy of God. But mercy has found you today. I said mercy has found you today. So you don't leave this place without pressing into something. And as we go into this new, we keep pressing. God qualifies the unqualified. If you're here, you're completely backslidden. By the time I finish this message and, and, and ask for people to give their life to Christ, don't wish it away. It's just one prayer. Just submit your life. Because the mercy of God has come to you. You're a candidate for divine mercy. God is going to obliterate everything. All the handwriting of ordinance written against you, eh? all the shenanigans and different things that you have done, God is going to turn everything around and 2022 will be your year of new beginning. Maybe I'm only speaking to two people here, I recognize that. But those two people, you're not going to be the same again. So Jesus, let's leave the, the Canaanite woman alone. Jesus, at this point, said, this is my scope. By the time we get to John chapter 11, there was a divine signal that made Jesus to recognize that the scope has changed. The scope has changed. The scope has changed. The scope has changed. They told him that another set of people who are outside of your scope are looking for you. And Jesus told them, the hour has come. The hour has come. Go back to John, 11, John 12. Uh, uh, and, and 24 for me. Uh, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. There's a season for me to press in. There's a season for me to know that I can be more. He said, and most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. And when it dies, it brings forth much fruit, much fruit, much fruit. The seed is a carrier of potential and promise. That's what the seed is. Seed is a carrier of potential and promise. And each and every one of us are carrying seeds. Yeah. We're carrying seeds. As you continue in this year, there are seeds in you that will cause your breaking forth. And my prayer is that God will open your eyes to see them and to be able to do the right things with them, which is to lay them down in the appropriate places. So the person who appreciate the power of seed sowing is the one that is ready to emerge. It's the one that is ready to emerge. There's a seed within each and every one of us. The big question is whether you have identified it. There are seeds within your seed which are only released when your seed is planted and it becomes fruitful. As we go into 2022, as we press further, into what God has in mind for us, each and every one of us must see our lives as a seed that needs to be planted. Jesus described himself, his life, his calling as a seed. He said, if this thing is going to blow beyond this point, we need to bury this seed. And that's what we're examining for the remaining time that I have. How do you allow yourself as a seed to be buried? so that you can multiply, so that you can multiply. Galatians 6, 7, and 8, he said, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sow, that he shall reap. For he who sow to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sow to the spirit will of the spirit reap, reap everlasting life. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. You can't deceive God. In fact, the truth is that you can't deceive yourself as well. A lot of the time we know what we're supposed to be doing that we're not doing. We know what needs to be laid down that is not laid down. We know a part of us that needs to die and be submitted so that it can blossom. It's just that the process is a difficult one. Many of us have interacted with, you know, elementary agriculture, whether in school or, you know, in some ways. And we know, just like farmers, they understand that seeds remain dormant or inactive until conditions are right for germination. And it's my responsibility, if I'm going to be a good farmer, sometimes to create the right condition, to look for the right condition. 
Many people, that's why the Bible says, don't be deceived, God is not mocked. Whatever a man sow, that shall he reap. Many people are dodging the right condition. They are dodging things that can lead to their emergence. And then, yet they are still praying. Yeah. You know, you can be like a farmer who goes into an open field, plows it, if it's a good farmer. Some people will not even plow anything. You know the way some people think faith works? You don't have to do anything. Just pray. <laughs> that is what has brought us to where we are in Africa. <laughs> because we think prayer will give us good roads. Angels don't build roads. Human beings do. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Angels don't build, they don't build skyscrapers. People go into real estate and labor and develop. People go into government and labor and develop. People go into business, go into industries, and labor and develop industries and open things up. That's how development comes. But you know, in Africa, prayer is the key, and prayer is the master key. <laughs> and prayer is actually indeed a key. And it opens things up but mostly in the spirit. The rubber has to meet the road on ground. When the heavens are open, it's time to sow my seed. Are you still with me today? When the heavens are open, it's time to put my divine abilities to work. It's time to do something. Glory be to Jesus. All seeds need, you know, certain things for them to grow and germinate. In simple agriculture, he borrowed me two minutes for this to be an agricultural class. The seed needs the right soil type. The seed needs water and oxygen. The seed needs the right temperature and a measure of light. You can get a diploma in agriculture right now. Just with that simple nugget. <laughs> so for your seed to germinate, you must understand and fulfill the necessary conditions. Can you let me look at your neighbor this morning and tell somebody, say you carry seed. Say it must grow. It must multiply. It must increase. Say you are more than this. And God wants to unleash you to your world. Four things about the emergence of your seed. Quickly, four things about the emergence of your seed. If we're going to emerge in this new season, it means, like Jesus described it, this seed must fall to the ground to bring forth. Yeah. You, your idiosyncrasies, your mindsets, your perspectives, and all those things, you know, there's a need to bury certain things for some things to come up. Where you have been is not the best of God. How you have deployed your potentials is not the maximum. The best of God, like we always say here, is not in the past, it's in your future. Yeah. That's why scripture says the path of a good man is like shining light. It shines brighter and brighter. And for us to achieve that, we need to behave like Jesus when he made that statement in John 12 and 24, except a cone of wheat fall to the ground and die, it remains dormant. It abides alone. It remains the same. Same of the same is because we are refusing to die. <laughs> if I can put it that way. Nobody likes that word. But it has a positive connotation if we want to move forward. Yeah. Is somebody still with me today? The first thought I want to share is that your seed will perform best in the right kind of soil. Your seed will perform best in the right kind of soil. Where have you been putting your seed? Whether it's natural ability, divine endowment, your potentials, 
your spiritual seed, where have you been putting your seed? There's a right soil for every seed. Somebody listening to me right now, you need to trust God. You can be more in this new year, but your seed has to be planted in the right place. Apples don't naturally grow in Nigeria. The same way. What's the English word for it? Agbaluma cannot survive in England. Yeah. What, 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 can you borrow me the word? Yeah. African cherry. Is that what they call it? Yeah. Uh, they localize its destiny. They call it African cherry. Yeah. <laughs> so, your seed will perform best in the right kind of soil. Somebody who is in the wrong industry, I pray for you today. This is your year of emergence. Amen. Somebody who is on the wrong platform, I pray for you today. This is your year of emergency to your right platform. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, somebody say better amen. amen. The right soil provides a conducive environment for sprouting. Where are you putting your effort? Where are you planting your seed? The Bible says, for instance, in, uh, in Psalm 92, verse 13, it says, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age, and they shall be fresh and flourishing, verse 14 says. Even when it comes to spiritual things, you need to know where God is planting you or where God has planted you. Because that's where you're going to grow. Some people treat church like fast food restaurants. You know, today I go to KFC, tomorrow I go to Mr. Biggs, and that's here in our local, uh, you know, all those fast foods, you know, tomorrow, oh, it's a burger shop, I want to go, so, you know, some people will say, ah, I love the praise worship in that church, in this place. Uh, maybe they preach the word, but they don't have music. So I'll go for praise worship there, and I'll come and listen to the word here. <laughs> we have commoditized the faith community. We don't see it as a place where God plants you. <laughs> yeah. The beans that your mother cooks may not be as sweet, but she's still your mother. Mm -hmm. And if you leave that family <laughs> because of beans, you may have walked away from your destiny. <laughs> Is somebody still with me today? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, when we were growing up, you have neighbors whose mothers know how to fry plantain <laughs> or something like that, or one special delicacy. And when the person is cooking, all the people in the community know. In fact, people go there to enjoy it. Does that change the fact that your surname still remains the same? <laughs> that if you are like me, you are Akinabi, you remain Akinabi. Despite the fact that in the neighbor's house, the idea Kaikon is special. You, you understand what I'm saying? But here, all we know to do is okra soup and eba. Or maybe just jollof fries. We stay with it, we enjoy it occasionally. When we just need to have a feed of the Edika icon, we don't change family because of it, but we can go there <laughs> and have small. Am I still with saying something that you reckon with? We need to have a sense of planting. Young people in this house, listen to me. All this touch and go in business. You have done five businesses in the last five years. Where has God called you to in business? Before you know it, you will go past 45 and you will not have been established in any area of life. I know I'm jumping quickly. I've moved away from church to business right now. Yeah. I'm sounding the alarm to somebody that it's time for you to emerge and locate your soil, locate your home ground where God wants you to emerge. People say, yeah, I have different ability. I can do many things. But you can't be a jack of all trades and master of none. Yeah. God is interested in planting people. 
The psalmist says, let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. Let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands. It's not touch and go. That, that does not lead to divine establishment. Establish the work of our hands. That's what the scripture says. Establish the work of our hands. You can't make impact when you are known for nothing. If they are mentioning people in any nation where you are, in any city where you are, in a particular area where God has called you to, before they mention five, they must mention your name. That's what, that, that's what demonstrates that you are a child of God, the light of God is upon you, the glory of God is upon you. Are you still with me, somebody? It's very, very important that we all get this. Very, very important. It's very important. So, locate your soil. The place where you're supposed to be. What kind of business or career you should be in. Yeah. Where you should plant your seed of affection. You know, I can't talk without talking about relationship. Yeah. Where, because affection is also a seed. Some people, let me land on young people again. The old people, they have sown their wide oats. Now they have settled. Yeah. The young people. You can't be sowing seed of affection you know, anyhow, locate your ground. Young man, listen to me. You, in this 2022, you can't be dating three ladies at the same time. Destiny cannot be fulfilled like that, maritally. You will be, you know, an accident going somewhere to happen if you continue like that. I don't care whether you're a bearded gang or bald head, whatever. <laughs> whatever your fancy is. That does not define a man. What defines a man is focus. Are you still with me today? That's what defines a man. And responsibility. That I allow God to lead me and I sow my seed of affection. I build and establish something that will last for time and eternity. Is somebody still with me today? I said, are you still with me? So it's time to sow your seed of affection carefully. Your seed will perform best in the right kind of soil. Number two, don't fear pain and pressure. So the temperature may be uncomfortable, but it's necessary for your seed to go. You know, we've said, locate your, your soil and all that and all that. Yeah, it's not going to be easy to emerge. When you put a seed in the ground, the temperature at the surface of the ground is different from the one under the ground. to build a new enterprise from scratch, to leave where you used to be as somebody that is not spiritually sound to becoming more spiritually sound. You need spiritual fire. The temperature has to change. You have to be willing to pray more, study the word of God more, and all that. To build a business, it takes rigor at the same time, just like you're building your spiritual life. It takes rigor. The temperature may be utter. The place, I mean, uh, uh, as the seed that is growing the ground. To decompose, it requires pressure and temperature. But that's how we, 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 we shift in the spirit and in the physical. Many people pray to do big things for themselves and for God. But I tell you, the pressure is real. The pressure is real. I'm not the same person that I am right now uh, uh, five, six, or seven years ago. Not even two years ago. There was a time that this church was just one church in one location, just a congregation of, of about maybe 500 people or so, or 300 people. The pressure was minimal. Yeah. What uh, Pastor Deba and I went through over this weekend, having people with people in other time zones, you know, and all that, uh, a church, you know, in Canada, other time zones where we were, were, were contemplating church plants and all that. Just wake up in the middle of the night, you train, you do this. Uh, the pressure is real. It's real. Yeah. Or is it to talk about all the other things we do in, you know, in, 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 in the humanitarian side? You know, you have to look, I mean, all kinds of things going on. Somebody, uh, if a conglomerate has been coded into your DNA, you will need high temperature for it to sprout. That's what I'm saying. You have to be able to juggle many balls. 
You have to be able to think on your, on your feet. You, you, you have to be able to manage family and manage business pressure at the same time. You can't afford to cave in. You need to get used to uncomfortable situations. You need to get used to high temperature and pressure. That's how we emerge. Paul described it in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 17 and 18. It says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Yeah. Say, so why we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Can you hear me tell your neighbor? It's time to endure hardship. So you can move to your next level. Glory be to Jesus. So do not be afraid of temporary discomfort. Neither to bring out your divine DNA. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Another, an example of it is taking our time to fast. Like we are doing right now. Some people have just behaved as if this 21 day fast does not concern them. Yeah, that's how some people have just behaved. And that's how they do in this church every year. I don't know who sent them. I don't, know what, I don't know what is chasing them. Yeah. That's how some people are behaving right now. We said it. We sang it. We wrote it on the screen. And you are just looking away. Yeah. And yet, you want to press into the best of God and into the kingdom of God. Like we say, Matthew uh, 11 and 12, uh, and verse 12. Since the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God is forcefully advancing. The forceful advance, advances with it. That's what, what we've said. So you, you can't just be looking away. The pressure of skipping one or two meals, yeah, to seek God is necessary if you will work with God to build what God wants to build for you. They that seek me early shall find me. That's what the scripture says. So release your January to God and seek him this month so that the remaining months of the year you will know how to beg him to show up. It will just show up. Yeah. So that divine visitation can be a normal thing around your life. Also, it's important to understand that when we talk about pressure, there are many things that we do underneath the surface that people don't see. Nobody cares about them. But you need to understand that those are the things that make things sustainable. The global office building that's at the back where we, uh, I'm going to talk about that in subsequent weeks, where we're going to have, I mean, we have our studios, we have some co-working space for young entrepreneurs here. So, so many beautiful things in there. Uh, 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 things Church is going to be there, uh, global office, uh, and all that. When they were building that place, when we laid the foundation in 2020, for months, we couldn't see anything coming up. Because my office is in the one-story building beside, from my office, I used to look down and look at what they were doing on that. Because we were going up, up to seven floors, they had to do a lot there. For some people, they always want to be seen. You want people to see you, reckon with you. Sometimes you need to go under temperature, go under the radar, so that your foundation can become more solid. You know, these days of social media, some people think that if you don't show up on Instagram for one week, you are dead. You are not dead. You are not dead. You are alive. Your destiny is being reshaped. By God, so that when you show up, the earth will hear your voice. There's no point being there, faffing away. You are not relevant to anybody. You are not adding value to anybody. You are not looking for using it to people are using you to make money <laughs> because you are part of the people they are counting for them. Say, ah, see, you are an influencer. You are, this one has come too, so they will pay them for that. Yeah, it's time that Jesus said, "Except the kind of wood be buried." Sometimes being buried means go outside of the radar. Yeah. Be comfortable with being forgotten for a while. Yeah. Be comfortable with being forgotten for a while. Be comfortable with nobody calling you for a while. Don't get angry because all your friends are not calling. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Because the time will come. Just like the season that I am right now. That the call will be too much for you. You'll be begging other people to help you pick them. <laughs> Say amen, somebody. Yeah. yeah. 
It's time, I mean, a time will come where everybody will want to buy what you're selling. But it's okay to be uncomfortable with being forgotten sometimes. That's why it says, I said the corn of wheat fall to the ground and die. At that point of death, before the sprouting, nobody knows anything is there. Yeah. When the seed is under, until it starts to sprout, when it's under, nobody gives a hoot about you. You're just there. And somebody that's the season you are in right now, get comfortable in that season. Because very soon, you will sprout. Don't force yourself out unnecessarily. That's what I'm saying. Very soon, you will sprout. Glory be to Jesus. Nurture your seed. Let me wrap it up quickly. With my last two points. Nurture your seed. Draw out of the ground. Draw from your surrounding. Pour something to nurture your seed. It's time to nurture the seed. Nurture your dreams. Nurture the relationships that will, will, will empower your dreams. Empowering relationships are like water and oxygen for our seed. Embrace trainings and capacity development that will lead to the nurturing of your seed. Nurture your seed with appropriate information. Because God wants you to be more than this. But that seed has to be properly nurtured. Has to be properly nurtured. Don't be afraid to pay the price required to nurture and grow your seed. Somebody, you, as you go further into this year, make up your mind that you're going to nurture your relationships. You're going to nurture your spouse. Yeah, you're going to nurture what God has put in your hand. Nurture your seed. And lastly today, take up your cross. Seeds grow over time, not overnight. Yeah. Seeds grow over time, not overnight. Yeah. Can you put that slide up for me, please? Yeah. Take up your cross. Seeds grow over time, not overnight. Jesus stayed on the cross. And he told his disciples where he went on his own cross. He said they must carry their cross and follow him. Many of us are still second-guessing the kind of price we need to pay. And we're not willing to endure anything at all. Again, I speak to young people under the influence of my voice today, whether you are here live or online. Some things have a process. Somebody say after me, say process. Or come and say it again, say process. Yeah. The process to glorification, a part of it is the cross. Yeah who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the pain and despised the cross. But he had to go there. The cross couldn't stop him. Yeah. Hebrews 10 and 36 says, For you have need of patience or endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. You may receive the promise. You may receive the promise. Glory be to Jesus. I said glory be to Jesus. Patience built character in us. So don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. You're going to be more than who you are and where you're being. But a process is available for you to follow. And I want to encourage everyone today. When it comes to finances, in this year of the Lord, 2022, allow God to order your steps. Don't unnecessarily go for all these funny schemes, you know, Ponzi scheme. Don't manipulate. Don't backstab. Don't push something, somebody out of position for you to get up into position. Those positions don't last. Yeah. It's the Lord that enthrones kings. It takes one out and puts another. Are you still with me today? Yeah. Very, very important. Money that is gotten hastily, what happens to it? It disappears. It disappears. You need to recognize that God, it is the will of God to bless you and to push resources to you, but there's a process. There's a process. There's a process. There's a process. And we must not circum, circum, circumvent that process. Yeah. We must not circumvent, circumvent that process. In conclusion, 
to emerge and become more, be willing to embrace the process of change, invest in the process of growth, endure the discomfort of transition in order to harvest newness, and stand firm in the liberty of the Son of God. Locate the good ground that God has planted you. Push. Stay there. You're going to be more. There's more to you than meets the high. There's more to you than what you have seen. This is our year of emergence. We emerge into greatness. We emerge into the fullness of God's calling. Our DNA must gain expression this year. And whatever has repressed your DNA, today I agree with you by faith that the hand of God comes upon you for a great emergence. Nothing will be able to hold you down. I said nothing will be able to hold you down in the name of the Lord Jesus. Grace is released for the fulfillment of your destiny. Lift your two hands, everyone, under the influence of my voice, everyone online. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that the hand of God comes upon you, lifting you, lifting you out of the pit in the name of Jesus. Someone, there's a divine placement for you in 2022. You will not miss it in the name of Jesus. I say you will not miss your divine placement in the name of the Lord Jesus. I decree and declare it again. You will not miss your divine placement. 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 In the name of Jesus, every destiny that has been put in a corner, I decree and declare that the light of God shines upon you. God puts you on the highway of destiny. You will no longer be hidden from opportunities. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you will no longer be hidden from opportunities. In the name of Jesus, everyone who is in a dry pit spiritually, anyone who is in a dry pit emotionally, I decree and declare that your time is up in that dry pit. My God is lifting you out of dry pits. Come out of emotional dry pits. In the name of Jesus, we break the hold of the spirit of discouragement and we decree the hand of God lifts you out of dry pits. In the name of Jesus, Anyone in a dry pit financially, I decree this season, you are lifted out in the name of Jesus. My God positions you supernaturally. He sends men and women to lift you up. You will no longer be stranded. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I said you will no longer be stranded. You will be more than where you have been. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. May the light of God shine upon you this season. Darkness disappears from your life. Confusion comes to an end. In the name of the Lord Jesus, anyone who came into this service confused, I speak over your life right now. I decree you are going into this week with clarity of mind. That, that cloud disappears over your life in the name of Jesus. I command clouds are shifting right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That cloud shifts right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, everlasting Father. Somebody who may be here or somebody watching online, there's a cloud of confusion over your family that has created unnecessary conflict. I don't know who you are, but God knows you and you know yourself. As you go into this week, I agree together with you by faith. That cloud shifts. There's peace in that relationship. There's peace in your marriage. There's peace in your family. We command the cloud of confusion. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. Wave your hands to him and bless him all over this place. Bless the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless your name. Father, we bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. 
And for everyone right in front of my voice right in this room, can I ask that you bow down your head for a minute? Anyone online, please join in this prayer. I want to pray for anyone that is joining to this service right now who may be saying, PG, I don't know Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. I want to give my life to Christ. Or somebody who may be saying, I gave my life to Christ before, but I backslid into sin. I told you earlier in the message, there's always a time to make a decision. To step into a new place spiritually. Where you have been spiritually may not be a good positioning for grace and for the best of God. Maybe you used to love God with your heart and strive to get better in the things of the Spirit. But you have just seen all that mindset. Now it's a case of what will be, will be. By just living under the inf of all kinds of influence. This is the time to come back to the influence of the Holy Spirit. Or maybe you've never said a prayer before to give your life to Christ. God wants to touch your heart right now and touch your life. And he wants to forgive your sins and accept you as his child. I'd love to pray for you, whatever you are this, this, this time. I'd love to pray for you. If you're right in this room, I'd love to ask that if you want to be a part of the prayer, to give your life to Christ or to rededicate your life to Christ, that you lift your right hand above your head. If you're online, I want you to go to the chat room and just let us know, I want to give my life to Jesus. Or I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. If you're right in this room, can I ask that you lift your right hand above your head? I want to pray for you. It's a sign of your surrender to Jesus when you do that. Whether you're on the gallery, under the gallery, on the main floor, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. I want you to lift your right hand above your head. I'm going to pray for you right where you are. God will come into your life and you will never be the same again. You'll never be the same. If you're lifting your hand, I want you to lift it well. You're lifting it to Jesus and not to me. God wants to start something new in your life right now. Whether you are dedicating your life to Christ or you've never said a prayer before, you're saying it for the first time. Please do the same. Just lift your right hand above your head. I'm going to pray for you. Thank you for those hands on the gallery. Thank you for those hands. Thank you for those hands everywhere. If your hand is up, can you stand where you are? Just where you are. Just where you are. The time is, uh, you know, gone. Just stand where you are. Remain where you are, but stand. Just stand. Stand. Stand where you are. Quickly, just stand. Stand with me right now. Stand. Thank you for standing. Thank you for standing. Just stand right now. Stand. Stand where you are. Jesus is right with you where you are, and I want you to just stand. And I'm going to pray for you right where you are. You'll never be the same again. Never be the same again. Uh, I'm still waiting for one or two people. If you are online, there's a time to go into the chat room, to the comment, and say, I'm rededicating my life to Jesus. Or I want to give my life to Jesus. And you will say this prayer with us as well. And something will shift in your life. You'll never be the same again. The Holy Spirit will keep echoing this to you. I can be more than this. You can be more than this. Something more that God wants to do in your spiritual experience. If you're standing, I want you to say with me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I ask that you forgive me my sins and that you cleanse me from every unrighteousness. Say, I receive you today as my Lord and my personal Savior. Come into my life. Fill my heart with your spirit and give me a new beginning. In the name of Jesus. Say, I willingly, completely, absolutely surrender my life to you. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name.